subject linguistics course title pragmatics and discourse analysis module 4 presupposition 1 writers rajni sharora and spriha agarwal presenter rajni sharora presuppositions are background assumptions about the world or a certain state of affairs which are implicitly stated in an utterance they involve propositions which deal with the already existing knowledge common to both the speaker and the hearer. Since the truth of these propositions is taken for granted, they are never directly asserted in an utterance. Take for example the following piece of conversation between A and B. A. My brother has started smoking again. Let's call it utterance 1. B. Really. Let's call it utterance 2. In this conversation, A's assertion about his brother adds to B's knowledge a new fact that he has started smoking again. However, the conversation will not be meaningful unless the following propositions are true. 1. A has a brother. 2. B knows that A has a brother. 3. A knows that B knows that A has a brother. 4. B is aware of the fact that A's brother used to smoke. 5. A knows that B is aware of the fact that A's brother used to smoke. 6. B is aware of the fact that A's brother had stopped smoking. 7. A knows that B is aware of the fact that A's brother had stopped smoking. 8. A believes that B would be interested and willing to know about A's brother. All these propositions are background assumptions which should be taken to be true and uncontroversial by the speaker to have uttered. These background assumptions are called presuppositions. Without presupposing all of these propositions, 1 to 8, A's utterance would be long-winded and boring as the utterance would then involve an explicit mention of all the presuppositions also. During the course of conversation, we need to follow what Grundy calls the principle of economy by choosing between the propositions that we need to put explicitly, that is the unknown facts and the ones that we need to put implicitly the known facts to avoid tedium and repetition. The basis on which the speaker chooses between the explicit and implicit propositions is the speaker's knowledge of what the hearer knows, that is, the mutual knowledge between the speaker and the hearer exemplified by the propositions 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 which we stated before. These propositions signify the mutual knowledge between A and B and this can be noted from the use of the verbs know, aware and believe. Presupposition should not be confused with a related concept called entailment. Presupposition and entailment both are related to the aspects of conversation which are known to the interlocutors. However, a presupposition deals with the interlocutor's knowledge about the world prior to the utterance exemplified by propositions 
1 to 8 and an entailment deals with the knowledge which follows logically from an utterance after it is made. In the case of entailment for the asserted fact in the utterance to be true its entailment should necessarily be true. A's utterance my brother has started smoking again that is utterance 1 entails that A's brother smokes without this fact it would be illogical to say that A's brother has started smoking again. Entailments deal with the semantic meaning inherent in the utterance itself and therefore cannot be cancelled. However, all the presuppositions 1 to 8 encoded in A's utterance might be cancelled in a context where B retorts in any one of the following ways instead of two when he says really you don't have a brother let's call it 2a your brother never smoked let's call it 2b entailment therefore follows directly from the meaning of the sentence and is never affected by whether what the speaker utters is true or false from this discussion we can say that Entailment is a linguistic phenomenon which is semantic in nature as it is concerned with the sentence meaning that is logically derived from the sentence alone. However, presupposition is both a semantic and a pragmatic phenomenon. It is semantic in the sense that it is associated with particular linguistic items which encode the presupposed propositions. In utterance 1 for example the linguistic item my brother presupposes that A has a brother. A cannot say my brother unless he or she has a brother. Similarly the linguistic item again presupposes that the action smoking was done in the past too. Presuppositions are pragmatic by virtue of the fact that they are dependent on the mutual knowledge between the speaker and the hearer about the word, that is, the context provides a background to the conversation. We will now explore in detail the concept of semantic and pragmatic presuppositions, the various linguistic items which generate presuppositions and the characteristics of presuppositions. Later we shall see the problem of considering presupposition to be a semantic phenomenon and thereby try to explain that the phenomenon is more pragmatic rather than semantic. Before we begin to understand presupposition as a linguistic concept it is mandatory that we understand the difference between the ordinary language usage of the word presupposition and its usage within linguistics. Distinguishing between the two, Levinson points out that the ordinary language notion of presupposition is used. To use Levinson's words, to describe any kind of background assumption against which an action, theory, expression or utterance makes sense or is rational in contrast the technical sense of presuppositions restricted to certain pragmatic inferences or assumptions that seem at least to be built into the linguistic expressions and which can be isolated using specific linguistic tests. Some of the examples taken from his list of ordinary language uses of presuppositions are effects presuppose causes. John wrote Harry a letter 
presupposing he could read. Harry asked Bill to close the door, presupposing that Bill had left it open as usual. He hadn't, so he threw a chair at Harry. Adolf addressed the butler as Sir, presupposing that he was the host, Sir Ansel himself. The theory of evolution presupposes a vast time scale. None of these ordinary language presuppositions seem to arise from the linguistic items present in the sentences. We touched upon the linguistic notion of presupposition in the introduction. We shall now delve into this aspect in detail to learn how various linguistic items encode and generate presupposition in language. The speaker's background assumptions are encoded in language through the use of certain lexical items and grammatical structures. These linguistic items which generate presuppositions on the basis of which the hearer comprehends the speaker's utterance are called presupposition triggers. We'll discuss now the various types of presupposition triggering linguistic items under the type of presupposition they generate. Let's move on to the types of propositions. There are six main types of presuppositions, namely existential, factor, lexical, structural, non-factor and counter-conditional presuppositions. We shall explain each of these with examples. Let's first discuss existential presupposition. The existential presupposition deals with the linguistic items that presuppose the existence of an entity. Such presuppositions are triggered by the use of the linguistic items, definite noun phrase and possessive case. The expressions signifying definite descriptions such as Rakesh and other proper names, the car, the man, presuppose the existential as they presuppose the existence of the entity they refer to. For example, I saw the man in red shirt presupposes that there exists a man in red shirt. Mona won the national award for the best actor. Mona won the national award for the best actor presupposes that there is a person named Mona. Possessive constructions signified by the possessives such as Rakesh, my, her, your, his and their give rise to existential presuppositions. For example, Rakesh's car. Rakesh's car presupposes that Rakesh has a car. Her umbrella was broken. Her umbrella was broken presupposes that she had an umbrella. Let's move on to factive presupposition. Factive presupposition is triggered by the verbs that take as their complement clause something which can be considered a fact. This means that the proposition following a factive verb is the information that is presupposed. Examples of factive verbs include words such as regret, realize, aware, glad, discover, grasp, know, etc. She realized that she had forgotten her wallet. She realized that she had forgotten her wallet presupposes that she had forgotten her wallet. We regret working with Rohit. We regret working with Rohit presupposes that we worked with Rohit. I wasn't aware of the fact that she was ill. 
I wasn't aware of the fact that she was ill presupposes that she was ill. I'm glad that Rima passed her exams. I'm glad that Rima passed her exams presupposes that Rima passed her exams. Let's now move on to lexical presupposition. A linguistic expression involving lexical presupposition is the one in which the speaker's use of that linguistic expression is taken to presuppose another non-asserted meaning. Lexical presuppositions can be realized through implicative verbs, change of state verbs and iteratives. Implicative verbs such as manage and remember and forget give rise to other implicit meanings. For example, Mohan managed to reach the office on time. Mohan managed to reach the office on time presupposes that he tried to reach the office on time from the word manage and asserts that he reached the office. She remembered to return all the Ryan's books on time. She remembered to return all the Ryan's books on time presupposes that she should have remembered. Rita forgot to lock the cupboard which had all the important documents. Rita forget to lock the cupboard which had all the important documents presupposes that she shouldn't have forgotten. The verbs such as begin, stop, keen, leave, enter and come signify a change of state and therefore presuppose a previous state. For example, the bells began to ring. The bells began to ring presupposes that the bells were not ringing before. Jimmy stopped performing at the concerts after death of his wife. Jimmy stopped performing at the concerts after the death of his wife presupposes that he used to perform earlier. I left the room immediately. I left the room immediately presupposes that I was there in the room. Iteratives are words which signify a repetition of action. Words such as again, another, repeat and return presuppose an earlier action or event. For example, the police visited the site of investigation again. The police visited the site of investigation again presupposes that the police visited the site of investigation earlier too. I can eat another chapati. I can eat another chapati presupposes that I had eaten a chapati or chapatis before. Lexical presuppositions should not be confused with factive presuppositions. In the case of the former, a particular linguistic expression presupposes another non-stated implicit meaning, whereas in the case of the latter, the use of a particular linguistic expression presupposes the truth of the information stated explicitly after it. We now know that the utterance of a person A to a person B, I was late for the school again, presupposes that A had been late for the school before too. However, this utterance can be interpreted as A's criticism of B in a situation wherein B drops A to school and was a cause of A's reaching late to the school earlier. However, A's use of presuppositions through the word again made the criticism implicit and less direct and therefore the language more polite. Let's now move on to structural presupposition. Structural presuppositions arise from the use of certain types of sentence structures such as 
interrogatives and adverbial clauses. Speakers use such structures if they want a proposition to be considered a taken for granted fact. Presuppositions are associated with interrogative structures in the form of yes no questions, alternative questions, WH questions and embedded questions. Do you want a cup of tea? Do you want a cup of tea presupposes that the hearer either wants a cup of tea or he or she doesn't. Do you want tea or coffee? Do you want tea or coffee presupposes that the hearer wants either tea or coffee or the hearer wants to have something. Where is the Department of Linguistics? Where is the Department of Linguistics presupposes that there is a Department of Linguistics. I wonder what they are thinking about presupposes that they are thinking about something. Presuppositions are also associated with structures involving adverbial clauses of time, place and reason. Look at the examples now. Before Mary even wrote her exam, Jack knew that she'll pass it. Before Mary even wrote her exam, Jack knew that she'll pass it presupposes that Mary wrote her exam. When the bell rang, she crossed the river. When the bell rang, she crossed the river presupposes that the bell rang. Since Dr. Wilson died, we have lost a good teacher. Since Dr. Wilson died, we've lost a good teacher presupposes that Dr. Wilson died. You can look for the key where you keep your goggles. You can look for the key where you keep your goggles presupposes that you keep your goggles somewhere. Because I did not drop her to the office, she got late. Because I did not drop her to the office, she got late presupposes that I did not drop her to the office. Let's now move on to non-factive presupposition. All the examples given above were associated with the context in which presuppositions are assumed to be true. However, there are a number of verbs in English which give rise to non-factive presuppositions that is the proposition following them is not true. For example, I dreamed that I was on the moon. I dreamed that I was on the moon presupposes that I was not on the moon. She imagined herself as the new president of India. She imagined herself as the new president of India presupposes that she was not the president of India. He pretends to be happy with his job. He pretends to be happy with his job presupposes that he is not happy with his job. Let's talk about counterfactual presupposition. Counterfactual presupposition generates a presupposition that what is presupposed is false and is the opposite of what is true. The structures involving such presuppositions are counterfactual conditionals beginning with the if clause. They presuppose the information supplied by the if clause to be false at the time of utterance. For example, if Seema had invited me to her wedding, I too would have invited her to mine. If Seema had invited me to her wedding, I too would have invited her to mine presupposes that Seema did not invite me to her wedding. Now let's look at a piece of conversation and notice a humorous undertone in the use of presupposition. Two people Radha and Ravi are sitting in the drawing room. A clattering noise comes from the kitchen. Radha shouts. Who's there in the kitchen? Ravi. It's Raju. 
He was cleaning the glass utensils. Radha, it looks like he's managed to break something finally after 10 years with us. Ravi, yes, if you had trained him to handle the utensils, he would have broken something long ago. While utterances involving counterfactual conditional give rise to presupposition, those involving real conditionals do not do so. Let's compare the two utterances. If I had got the scholarship, I would have been lucky. And if I get the scholarship, I would think that I am lucky. The first carries the presupposition that I did not get the scholarship. However, the second utterance involving a conditional does not carry any such presupposed message that the hearer and the speaker mutually agree to but in fact implicitly conveys that the referent of I may or may not get the scholarship. Such implicit messages are known as implicatures. An important feature of presupposition is its constancy under negation, that is, its ability to survive negation. This means that the presupposition of an utterance will remain the same even when the statement is negated. So take for example utterance 1 and its negation 1a. 1. My brother has started smoking again. 1a. My brother hasn't started smoking again. Both 1 and 1a presuppose that the speaker has a brother and that he used to smoke before. This feature applies to all the above discussed examples of presuppositions except alternative questions, WH questions and embedded WH questions. It is noteworthy that negation changes the semantic meaning of one. In such a case, the presuppositions survive but entailments do not. Therefore, Unlike 1, 1A cannot be said to entail that A's brother smokes at present because the sentence means that he had stopped smoking and has not started it again. Most of our discussion has so far focused on semantic presupposition. Semantic presuppositions can be derived from the lexical and grammatical items in an utterance. They are not context dependent. The presupposition types discussed involve semantic presuppositions as the presuppositions involved hold true irrespective of their context of use. For example, the lexical items John and my brother would always presuppose the existence of their reference in the physical world. Another important feature which can be associated with a semantic presupposition is its ability to survive negation. However, in the further discussion, we shall see how this kind of semantic theory of presupposition is problematic when we discuss defeasibility and the presupposition projection. We will now look at presupposition as more a pragmatic phenomenon and see how interpretation of the presuppositions carried by the linguistic forms is also context dependent. This module deals with the presupposition that are propositions taken for granted in conversation. These background assumptions are of two kinds, those that are more semantic in nature and are triggered by certain linguistic items such as definite expressions, factives, iteratives, adverbial clauses, etc., and those that are more pragmatic in nature and are based on two factors, namely common ground and appropriacy of an utterance in a context. The next module will focus on the discussion of various types of presupposition triggering linguistic items. It will also discuss how the semantic theory of 
presupposition cannot explain the influence of linguistic and discourse context on the derivation of presuppositions which leads to the problem of defeasibility and projection and how the accommodation of presupposition is possible in a context where the interlocutors lack mutual knowledge. Thank you.